Hi, I'm Dave Cathy, the food dude here in the Oklahoma studio, and I'm here today with Morgan Murphy, author of the new book, On, uh, on the Road Again, Off the Beaten Path. This is number three. This is number three. That's right. So you're here in town. This, t tell folks a little bit about this concept first. Well, it, it's a pretty simple concept. These are my favorite restaurants across 16 states. Okay. So I was the food critic for mm -hmm. Southern Living, That's and right. then I now write books for them full time. Mm -hmm. But these are uh, small mom and pop, out of the way, tucked away spots mm -hmm. in um, about 60 different cities across <laughs> the Southern United States that I researched by the old fashioned mm -hmm. way, driving to them all in Love my. It. Well, Jalopy 1956 Cadillac. <laughs> That's right, because you're a car guy too. We'll get to that in a second. But so, so it's really kind of an excuse for you to get out in the cars that you love. Yeah, it? you know, and mechanics <laughs> have the best places. To, they have the best recommendations of where to eat. And fortunately, I break down in every state I go to. It seems like. <laughs> so we've got, you know, we've got a lot of the kind of places you uh, described there here in Oklahoma. We've got plenty of those. So tell folks about the places you visited for this book. Well, one of my first uh, spots here in the book is a, is a place called Cuppies and Joe right mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. Oklahoma City, which I really uh, love and found completely <laughs> by accident. A lot of people say, well, how do you find um, the restaurants you cover? And most of them I find by word of mouth. I keep sure. a huge running list of foodies like you right, and right. others who say, oh, you got to check this place out. It's down the dirt road. You go over the hill, take a left at the cow, that kind of thing. <laughs> and you can't, you can't Google that stuff. You have to. You not have yet. To, not yet. <laughs> I'm sure they're working on it. <laughs> out in Palo Alto. That's they're right. working on it. <laughs> Put me out of business. But uh, right now it's still by word of mouth. And so about 5% of the bug luck is, is divine intervention though, and that was uh, Cuppies and Joe here. The place I'd gone to just wasn't up to the standard I wanted to put in the mm -hmm. book, and uh, I said, oh, we gotta go to a coffee shop to sort this out. And we walk <laughs> into Cuppies and Joe, and I was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and the Deacon Durvers are just the nicest people, yeah, and they yeah. took, I totally took them by surprise and uh, asked great. to feature them. So that's one spot mm -hmm. in, in the book. In past books uh, here in Oklahoma City, I've covered uh, Cattleman's, which I will drive uh, <laughs> 500 miles out of my way to eat there, because any place that starts serving uh, uh, pie and a T-bone at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> and the waitresses all call you sugar. That's that right. Is a good, that is a good restaurant in my book. That's right. <laughs> well, very good. And so, and you also went to Scratch. That's right. right. Yeah. A little bit out of town, mm -hmm. went to Scratch and just love that they, I, first off, I love the, the building. It's a great building. To me, yeah. a restaurant, uh, there are three main components of a restaurant. There's the food, of mm -hmm. course, and that's the main one. Mm -hmm. And then there's the service and the ambiance. Now, any one of those can be broken and you'll still go. That's you right. know, like you'll go to the barbecue shack that's sort of listing to starboard right. Right. Um, <laughs> and has, you know, it looks like it's going to fall in on you. As but long the, as I get my brisket first. But the, <laughs> yeah, the, the brisket's amazing and the waitresses <laughs> call you honey and you'll yeah. never see the bottom of your sweet tea glass. <laughs> you'll still go. Or you'll go to that French restaurant that you know, it's gorgeous ambiance and the food is phenomenal, but the service is a little snooty, sure, right? Sure, sure. A great restaurant, though, has all three. Mm -hmm. And that's the, those are the ones I like to focus on. And Scratch really has all three. Mm -hmm. The food is all made from mm -hmm. Scratch. That's, that's right. where they get their name. The service is great. And the, the atmosphere, that's in an old telephone that's exchange right. building. It's, and I yeah, think that right. atmosphere is really... Yeah. Really cool. Plus, their cocktails are just yeah. That's and that's yeah. That's they, that really kind of sets them apart. It does. It's a cool place. Their craft cocktails are that's really, right. That's really right. That's right. Well, you know, we know a little bit about Oklahoma already, and the places you talk about are very popular. Uh, so tell us a little bit, uh, you know, where can people drive to? A little further afield? A little further afield. Well, uh, Dallas, uh, just, you know, three it's hours. A little town down there. A little town, down uh, little town uh, <laughs> you know, the Little D, as it's called here in OKC. Uh, you know, I guess that's a short drive when mm -hmm. you're out west, right? Yeah, it's just, absolutely. It's just three hours. Just did know? it Sunday. Do it for lunch. <laughs> uh, there's a place called Sissy's mm -hmm. Southern Kitchen, and it, Sissy's has nev never gotten any national press, mm -hmm. uh, but she is, she's unbelievable. Her kitchen is, she does like, I call it Southern Gourmet. She does the best fried chicken, and she serves more champagne than any other bar or restaurant in the state of Texas. Really? <laughs> yeah, the woman knows how, the woman knows how to make a mean cocktail there too. This may be a theme with me, I don't know. <laughs> but she does uh, these, these roasted collards, which she gave oh, me the recipe man. for, and something she calls Texas caviar, which is a field pea salad. Yeah. And, 
I mean, yeah. just really inventive. That's in uh, Dallas. A little further down the road uh, towards Austin mm -hmm. uh, in West Coma, Texas. Not mm -hmm. West Texas, but West <laughs> Coma, Texas, which is in East Texas. <laughs> Makes sense. It's like North South Carolina. You know? <laughs> um, in West Texas, there's a place called Village Bakery. The big thing there is kolaches, oh, right? Yeah. These it's little kolache country. Uh, Czechoslovakia before you wreck your Slovakia, <laughs> right? And they, these little Czechoslovakian ladies make these amazing pastries there. I've been eating them in the car actually all day <laughs> on the way here. They're just like, they're like a truck or something. Yeah. But uh, they make these amazing kolaches there in West. And uh, it's, the place has been there since 1952. It was the first spot to sell uh, kolaches in Texas. Wow. And she gave me her family's secret recipe for it. It's in the book. Wow, that's but great. It's worth uh, it's worth a visit. It's a real slice of and we uh, have history some, there. And we have some check uh, up here in Oklahoma. Yeah. So I know there will be folks that will be running to the book just to make sure it's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you, Kyle, and that's one of the ones I had to fight our test kitchen over, man. We, we were having like fights in Czechoslovakia and calling the ambassador. I thought we were going to cause an international incident over it because Southern Living double checks all of these sure. recipes for me. They, I take, and they hate me sometimes because I'll bring back mm -hmm. a recipe that has starts with like, start with 20 gallons of chicken right. stock. And, <laughs> you know, so we break it down to a household portion that you can make at home. But we still want it to be very true to how the restaurant makes it so that the reader experiences. They can use this book like a, a travel guide. Sure. And just uh, it's organized by state, so you can go through each state. Pat Conroy gave me a very nice quote on the mm -hmm. back. He said he threw it in the back of his Buick <laughs> for any trip he makes through God's country. Uh, <laughs> Or you can use it as a cookbook and travel from your sure. own kitchen. And you've got playlists, too, which I love. Yeah, I, I, love, I need some <laughs> tunes on the road. <laughs> I don't have a uh, MP3 player in the 56 Cadillac. Well, uh, you know, that's you know, kind of working harder. on that, right? The music, the music is the open road for me, but so cars, playlists. And, yeah, talk, talk a little bit about your passion for cars. You've got, you know, that's what's what's more important to you, cars or or, or, or food? Or food. Oh, now you, you can't well, live without first. food. You, gotta, you can't live without food. Food is first, and I, I don't know, I love... I love old cars and people are like, why do you collect these slush bucket Cadillacs, mm -hmm. which during the 80s when I was in high school, uh -huh. you know, it was cool to have a BMW. It was not <laughs> right. cool to have a Fleetwood 75. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never tried to be cool, I guess. Yeah. But I, I love, I don't know, I love the enthusiasm mm -hmm. of the 1950s when people were like, we're going to put rockets on our cars. And, you know, <laughs> like the Jetsons. Yeah, and the, sure. my, my 56 has everything. It has four cigar lighters because it'd be rude to pass a hot, hot cigar. <laughs> Cigar lighter, right? There's four cigar lighters and six drinking tumblers and and 345 horsepower and no seat belts. Right? Wow! You know, it's, just, it's back in a, a day and age when people were weren't so afraid of they dying that worry. they forgot yeah. to live. That's you right. Know, that's they, right. And actually, my car is from Oklahoma. I bought an Edmund. There you go. Years ago. Shout out to Edmund. Well yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> now the other thing people might not know about you is your military background. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Well, I, uh, my family has a long history of military service, mm -hmm. and I admired uh, my grandfathers, who were both World War II veterans so much that uh, when I was 27, I joined the Navy Reserve. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about military service, I encourage you to, to do it, because it's been one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I joined the Navy 16 years ago. I'm mm -hmm. a commander in the Navy now, and mm -hmm. really proud of that and the people I serve with. Unfortunately, I've been on uh, uh, several uh, uh, sightseeing uh, <laughs> tours tours to uh, <laughs> spots as guests of our government. <laughs> well, we appreciate that very Thank much. You. Thank <laughs> you. So that, that's a downside, but downside. there are a lot of upsides to military yeah. service, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing to wear the cloth of the nation. I hear that. Well, we appreciate that, and we appreciate your guidance on where to eat we're on the when we're on the road with Off the Beaten Path. Number three. Number three. Watch out. You'll gain 30 pounds just <laughs> looking through that book. That's it's not a locale. It's not a diet book. That's There's... right. Well, we, we're okay with that here in Oklahoma, I think. Maybe Good. we need to work on now, it. The chicken fried steak. <laughs> Davey away. Thanks again, Morgan. Thank you. Check it out, folks.